I studied filmmaking in the US during the 70s. Recently, I've been doing talk shows on the voiceless dissidents, those that deserve to be heard but are silenced by the corporate media. The Treasury Department of the present Trump administration sanctioned me and my colleagues. You must have harassed them. You continue the show right here from my home. I am Nadir Talib Zadeh on Nadir's show. On Nadir's show. Greetings. We are in Beirut, and it's an honor to be speaking with Mr. Alexander Dugin, a Russian philosopher, a thinker, and analyst, which has presided over many of the sessions of the New Horizon Conference in Beirut. So we'll be talking about Lebanon and about eschatology and about his views about the role of Russia uh, in these times. So pay attention. Alexander Gelievich Dugin is a Russian political scientist, traditionalist, and one of the most popular ideologists of the creation of a Eurasian empire that would be opposed to North Atlantic interests. He's had close ties to the Kremlin and Russian military. Dugin serves as an advisor to the State Duma Speaker and key member of the ruling United Russia Party, Sergei Narishkin. Dugin was head of the Department of Sociology of International Relations of Moscow State University and director of the Center for Conservative Studies at the Faculty of Sociology, MSU. He was the leading organizer of the National Bolshevik Party, National Bolshevik Front, and Eurasia Party. He's the author of more than 30 books, among them Foundations of Geopolitics, 1997, and the Fourth Political Theory, 2009. In the Fourth Political Theory, he introduces a new political theory beyond capitalism, communism, and fascism, combining the best elements of all three. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Professor Dugan. We love you and we respect you. And um, I wish the best for you and what you're doing. Let me begin um, with a trip to, to Lebanon. Lebanon is a very important land uh, for Christians, for Muslims, uh, for those who believe in eschatology, for those who believe in the history of the Bible, the Old Testament, and of course the sensitive situation today, that's this confrontation uh, between um, the two sides and uh, um, and um, you've traveled well in, in the world, and so happy, we are so happy to have you here uh, at this time. And um, Do you have any special impressions that you haven't expressed other places that you might like to express? So, uh, first of all, thank you for invitation for your TV show. So I appreciate you uh, uh, very much, Mr. Nader Talib Zadeh. I love you and uh, Iran and all the... Uh, cultural line and spiritual line you represent. So thank you. Thank you. That is thank mutual you. appreciation. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you for inviting me to the conference of New Horizon here in Lebanon. I have visited some other conferences. I am always happy to, yeah. to be present on them of New Horizon conference. But that was something different, I would say, mm -hmm. because it was a kind of symbolic and spiritual openness in that mm -hmm. conference, openness mm -hmm. um, to the world, to the uh, earth, to the place we uh, we are. And Lebanon, it's uh, absolutely uh, symbolic and existential ground. Wow. Why existential? I think uh, when now we are, we are assisting the dramatic changes of uh, Islamic world, that is called Arab Spring, 
it is rather not spring, rather, rather it is bloody bath as in Libya and Syria with uh, hundreds of thousands of killed, tortured. So it is tra tra tragedy that mm -hmm. is going on in the Middle East, tragedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, uh, Lebanon uh, is the part of this, um, this global tra uh, tragedy. Uh, and I think that most important um, feature of Lebanon, this is unique balance, balance between um, identities. Yeah. So that is clear and very, very uh, powerful yeah. identity of Hezbollah, yeah. of Hezbollah as not of political party or some group, but of population that mm -hmm. is the kind of people one of the pop, uh, part uh, of the people of Lebanon is Hezbollah mm -hmm. it is the name of the people right. they are Shia they are Arab they are living in different place mostly in the south and in the part of the uh, Beirut but that is a kind of community community with established rule very powerful and uh, ready to defend uh, itself but at the same time very open uh, to to uh, insight, so mm -hmm. it is uh, and uh, ready to uh, enter in the dialogue. So that mm -hmm. is a kind of moral thing, Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. That is society based on mutual help, mm -hmm. on uh, profound religious uh, um, beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, and that is not formal religion, mm. a religion that is existential mm -hmm. religions, mm -hmm. that is uh, all life um, in the sacred. So, mm -hmm. so Hezbollah is a sacredness that mm -hmm. penetrates not only the highest level of human being, but the lowest. Mm -hmm. Everything, including material mm -hmm. things, are organized mm -hmm. with some order, with some, mm -hmm. with some special attention. Mm -hmm. And that is really mm -hmm. important. Yeah. There, here in Lebanon, uh, we see Christian population, they are Arab, mostly Arab, but they are patriots, they are part of this civilization. So when we, we, we speak about Arab world and represent only Islam, it is not so. Mm -hmm. There are integral parts of mm -hmm. uh, Christian, Arab, that mm -hmm. are as well the other community, mm -hmm. as well very devoted to, mm -hmm. to Christ. It's rare to... to, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to, to encounter, to meet in mm -hmm. Christian world the people who still believe mm -hmm. in Christ and mm -hmm. they maybe that is because they live so close to the Holy Land mm -hmm. to, but because that was the, the, the land of Christ, mm -hmm. the land of sacredness and there are Sunni and uh, very, very, um, very profound and very balanced there is as well extremists, but uh, there are everybody. There are yes. Druzes, yes. Uh, the, the last traces of Fatimid Empire. So yes. all empires mm -hmm. of Islamic world, uh, ancient tradition, mm -hmm. Christian cr Christian population, uh, Hezbollah, Shia, Sunni. Everybody is here, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, that is fragile politically, yeah. but. We have, now in Lebanon, I see one thing. Mm -hmm. We have a great task mm -hmm. uh, in front of us mm -hmm. to save that, mm -hmm. to, to keep that alive, mm -hmm. to, to uh, guard that, to conserve that, and let, don't let to destroy that by all these bloody events that are around Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So Lebanon is a kind of, of special uh, 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 a kind of uh, precious thing mm -hmm. that we need treasury, mm -hmm. we need to save. Mm -hmm. If we manage to save Lebanon with all these uh, identities, mm -hmm. with all these communities mm -hmm. coexisting in mm -hmm. the balance, we could build mm -hmm. uh, Islamic world or mm -hmm. Arab world based on this mm -hmm. pattern. So that, that is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, in that sense, that's existential ground. It mm -hmm. is not only uh, this small country with mm -hmm. small communities. Mm -hmm. That is the image of the global mm -hmm. Arab world. Mm -hmm. That is the image or model 
for the huge amounts of, of population and geopolitical uh, zones. So I see in Lebanon example how that coexistence is possible yes. without the West, without uh, liberal uh, models. So yes. that is traditional yes. coexistence. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, imposed liberal multi multiculturalism. That yeah. is something very organic. Mm -hmm. And if we don't destroy uh, artificially uh, vi uh, with violence, this organic coexistence, it could be prosperous during the hundreds of years and mm -hmm. thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So there is something very, very ancient about yes. Lebanon. Yes. Um, you know, about four decades ago, the Shia of uh, Lebanon were completely unknown. And they were, um, they were uh, not seen at all, uh, unclandestine. Um, they're, they're clandestine, they're, they're not seen at all. But uh, after Israel invaded Lebanon in 1982, the resistance was born. And this resistance was persistent. And of course the ideology that pervaded from Iran, the Islamic Revolution, uh, entered into this area. And this force became Hezbollah. Today Hezbollah is uh, it, it's sort of a game changer in the area. Now, out of all this, uh, this uh, scene, this arena, Russia enters. Out of all the West, the only people that enter this arena of Hezbollah and then the, 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 what, what they did with Syria, uh, Russia entered. And you as a Russian intellectual have have uh, also a uh, strike with eschatology. Uh, you have talked on Iranian national television about eschatology and a lot of Iran Hezbollah, a lot of those who, are, who listened to you, they were very touched by what you were saying, the message. Orthodox Christianity has not been known in this way before. We are, we're a little bit familiar with Protestants of the US and the Catholics of Europe and the West, but we never knew that the, it would be the Orthodox Christians who would step in. Now there are all kinds of rumors and stories. Oh, they're doing the Russians are doing for their own interest, and all we all we know about that. But it seems that's not the case. It seems it's something uh, more. It's a deeper thing. So in this um, very contested area, another Christian group has entered and has been effective in ousting this strange creation of CIA. And um, talk a little bit about what your, your mission is in illuminating on this subject. I know you talk about this, but especially because the audience for this show could be the West, it could be also Iranians and people in this area. Talk about how you take a strike on this issue of of the, the Russians' contribution in this uh, competition, this confrontation? So that is very uh, interesting questions. Uh, maybe do you know uh, what ethicism is? is? That is the tendency in the Christian Orthodox tradition that is regarded as most mystical, most uh, metaphysical, most profound part of, um, uh, of monastic life, ethicism mm -hmm. uh, developed by Saint uh, uh, Gr uh, Gr uh, Gregory Palama. Mm -hmm. And there is Mount Athos. Uh, now that is existing uh, territory in Greece mm -hmm. where there are many monasteries mm -hmm. Uh, are uh, whose monks still practice this ethicist uh, tradition. Yes. Ethicism is uh, about um, contemplation of uncreated light inside of our heart. Mm -hmm. And that it is tradition totally unpolitical, mm -hmm. metaphysical, but the elders of Mount Athos 
and the elders of Russian ethic cosmic tradition, they can understand the, the other dimension of the history, and they are very eschatologically oriented. And I have uh, heard one history. I could not say whether that is mm, real truth or something mm. like that. So before uh, taking decision to intervene in Syria, our president, Mr. Putin, has talked with one of the elder of this Mount Athos, Greek, Greek monk, practicing hesychasm, mm -hmm. this metaphysical mm -hmm. way of, of contemplation mm -hmm. that is the core of mm -hmm. our Orthodox tradition. And who has said to him, or suggested to him, you should go to Syria. So now we are almost in the Shia. We are almost in the Velayati Fakih, where there is some metaphysical contemplation of the spiritual reason of to do to do some political decision important to go to war or to or make peace, based on some purely spiritual spiritual ground. And as long as I know. Vladimir Putin, who is Orthodox believer, Christian Orthodox, for him, this advice mm -hmm. of small monk of Mount Athos was the, the size of the size of element. And um, maybe this monk didn't explain why he should uh, go there, maybe in order to save. Uh, um, Christians in Syria, that or mm. uh, in the Mal of Malula, of other yes. parts, because that was the land of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, devastated by mm. uh, this, as you have justly said, um, creation of CIA. That yes. because the the West was behind the ISIS and yes. the Israel and the, uh, Arabia Saudi Saudi Arabia, and uh, maybe there were there were other re reasons, but. I the only would, would like to draw attention that there was something eschatological in that, but in the context and the world vision of these monks mm -hmm. on the Mount Athos, and I was there as well, mm -hmm. and my, my, many my, of my friends uh, uh, regularly visit Mount Athos, there is clear understanding of what is modernity, that modernity it is the uh, uh, last time modernity, mm -hmm. globalization, uh, the Western hegemony. It is the Satanism, pure Satanism. Mm -hmm. And we are coming to the last moment mm -hmm. or to the last uh, Armageddon, last battle mm -hmm. between the force of light and the force of darkness. And for these Orthodox monks, the Western postmodern liberal civilization and all the proxies mm -hmm. of of, of it in the Middle East, mm -hmm. radical, radical terrorists, takfirists, um, uh, or uh, these provocators of bloody Arab Springs, mm -hmm. uh, Spring, all of them are part of this Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so, properly, in the eyes of the monks of Holy Mount Athos, mm -hmm. Agia or Russians, we, we came to Syria to participate in the final battle. We, we came maybe for the first time with weapon, with army, to the Holy Land yes. in order to defend the justice, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the light mm -hmm. uh, against uh, this army of darkness. So that is, I think, unknown elements of uh, a Russian military expedition. I, I would, wouldn't dismiss as well some materialist or strategical reasons. Mm -hmm. They were, but all geopolitical. Mm -hmm. uh, I have explained in my geopolitical writings mm -hmm. why we should return to the Middle East, uh, why Middle East is so important for the security reasons. But main point, I think, that is very uh, very light detail, small mm -hmm. detail, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, because that mm -hmm. is something of spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bible, there are uh, words mm -hmm. about 
the prophet Eliyahu, uh, mm -hmm. Elias, yes. that um, when the God revealed uh, himself to him, that was not in the, uh, in the huge sound uh, or um, uh, trembling of the earth, but in the very, very light and silent voice of the wind yes. and yes, that yes. Uh, i think that maybe this advice of our elder of mount athos was exactly not this geopolitical uh, considerations mm -hmm. of the ships or army or missiles but just just this thin voice of light wind but that was decisive Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that mm, what is going on now in the Middle East, it is the mirror of these eschatological events. Mm -hmm. And interesting, there is Protestant vision, Protestant eschatology, mm -hmm. that uh, 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 was prepared for that, because according to their reading of Bible, Russians, uh, we are the hordes of Gog and Magog, Mm -hmm. uh, the, or, or, and uh, Rosh, Meshech and Fuval of Bible are uh, interpreted as uh, Russia, Rosh, Russia, and we, need, we, we should intervene in the Holy Land in order to conquer Israel. And mm -hmm. after that, uh, they uh, will uh, come uh, born again Americans, they will save Israel, and after that, they will baptize all Israel in, in, uh, be, uh, uh, on the eve of the second coming. Mm -hmm. So all parts, mm -hmm. who, uh, as well, there is Jewish eschatology yes. uh, because the return to the Holy Land for Jews, uh, it is beginning of Messianic time. Mm -hmm. So everybody participating mm -hmm. in this uh, Middle East struggle are motivated behind the, this rationality, behind geopolitics, by some eschatological tendencies. Uh, they, uh, uh, few people know about that, but if we start to, to search deeper, we understand how important mm -hmm. spiritual reality mm -hmm. uh, and uh, religious arguments are in our modern politics. Yes. Um, I would like to make uh, a comment here about uh, an event that happened recently, but these events get buried with other events that follow them, so people forget it. Remember in Turkey, uh, a few years back, uh, something happened. The uh, Russian jet fighter was hit by the Turkish uh, anti-aircrafts, and it, was, it, it uh, fell. Uh, now. When that happened, no one reali realizes what caused it. Of course, uh, Erdogan apologized many times, and Mr. Putin was very angry, infuriated, because there was no reason. And he, was a, he said he had come into Turkish airspace. Okay, so what? So what? Why would you hit? Why would, so, but nobody knew the, ru the real story. The real story was on the ground, and it was in Tehran when... Mr. Vladimir Putin came to see Ayatollah Khamenei. And that evening, that meeting was very interesting and it was elaborately shown on the media where they came in a very friendly fashion, in a very, very interesting, very respectful, dignified way. And people saw the smiles and the satisfaction in the faces of these two gentlemen. And there was this elation also among all those people who believe in Ayatollah Khamenei and his way and in Mr. Vladimir Putin there was a sense of uh, sort of happiness that they have met of course now the success of defeating ISIS is a happy event the fact that things and this happiness had to be soured and the next morning right after this meeting which had proliferated the media, the images, the jet fighter was hit, and all that thing was forgotten suddenly. All that moment was forgotten, and it turned into this infuriated president of Russia against the Turkish 
leader and, and of course, threats were mentioned. Things. I, I want to say how the West is very careful, very jealous of this sort of accompaniment, this sort of uh, uh, coalition, that they go to extremes to sour it. I don't know if people in the world realize that timing, and these timings are very important, because, because there's no explanation, and Erdogan couldn't give an explanation, except later on he went to Moscow and said, the Americans forced me to do it. Uh, if you have any memories of that moment that we, we might not know. Yes, that uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, about, about Turkey, there was, I was participated. I participated in all the elements, uh, all the elements of the tragic situation. And that was not precisely Erdogan who uh, has ordered to uh, down our plane. That was already the coup. Uh, against him. So that mm. was Gelunist, Gulen, mm. Fethullah Gulen's sect mm. that made that, and Erdogan wasn't, o, 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 mm. was put in an awkward position precisely mm. because before that, on the eve of that, he has, he has come to the conclusion agreement with Putin. So yes, that yes. was uh, geopolitically important. But about Iran, Turkey, and Russia. It is very interesting that uh, when uh, one empire, modern empire, so-called empire, liberal, Western, hegemony, imperialistic empire, the continuation of British empire, uh, is uh, on decline, mm -hmm. there reappear the, uh, uh, the other forgotten mm -hmm. empires oh. with S. And it is very interesting that what we see in Syria, we see in Syria the reappearance, reemergence mm -hmm. of ancient empires destroyed before by the same West. Yes, yes. So we see reappearance of Russian Empire because Putin has something imperial in him. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe he is not yet the Tsar, but he is the kind of symbol of mm -hmm. the return to the, mm -hmm. to, to, to the Russian past, mm -hmm. to the Russian eternal imperial mission, mm -hmm. not uh, to the, of the past, but of the present and the, for the future. So it is clear that mm -hmm. now we, we are re-emerging Russian empire. But mm -hmm. what is Iran? That is re-emerging Persian empire. Mm -hmm. It is not only national state, it's mm -hmm. something more than that. Mm -hmm. It is not national. It is uh, it is Shia uh, uh, legacy. And I think that Lebanese Shiites they don't consider uh, themselves only as in, in the Western logic of mm -hmm. citizens of national state Lebanon. Mm -hmm. They are part of the Shia yeah. world, yes. and this Shia world is the part of the Muslim world. So mm -hmm. that is the different identity, and I think that this. Uh, uh, Iranian uh, Shia identity is very, very important. And that is embedded in the reality of mi uh, mi uh, Middle East in Syria. Mm -hmm. And there is the other empire, that is Turkish Empire. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Erdogan is a kind of transition to, to revival of this mm -hmm. empire. Mm -hmm. So when one em empire declined, the other and the rise. Um, uh, 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 empire mm. empires yes. arise, and we, we we see the next empire. We see Chinese empire. Yes. Now we see Zenpin. It, yes. it is not only Maoist communist uh, uh, country. That is new empire, mm -hmm. more and more powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, we could uh, imagine, for example, restoration of. Uh, That's right. Pakistan, uh, Pakistan Empire, Indian Empire. So we are welcome to the age of empires, mm -hmm. not of empire. Mm -hmm. uh, empire on decline, yes. empires on rise. Right. And I think that this uh, happiness, mm -hmm. empire is a sacred thing. Mm -hmm. uh, real empire is uh, should be sacred. The only uh, one empire is anti-sacred, that is empire of the West, hegemony. And I, I think the happiness 
mm. of, of Mr. Putin uh, um, encountering uh, uh, Rahbar, spiritual leader of Iran, or, or some special relations between Putin and Erdogan, yes. or Putin and San, San Zanpi, Xi Jinping. Mm. There are signs of some holy alliance secret alliance, saint alliance, saint alliance between the re-emergence of traditional civilizations. Mm -hmm. And that is really a sacred moment, because mm -hmm. if uh, we, we, should, we can overcome, we, we can win this still existing Western hegemony of liberalism, of postmodernism, mm -hmm. of, of so-called technological pro uh, progress that mm -hmm. leads us into the abyss, Mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, artificial intelligence, to mm -hmm. post-humanism. We can overcome this only together. Mm -hmm. And I think before our empires were in competition, mm -hmm. maybe in the future as well they will be in competition. But now, in this momentum, who, uh, mm, who uh, provokes competition uh, is enemy of all of us. That mm -hmm. is agent of hegemony that uh, doesn't want to disappear. So now we are in the situation that we should uh, unite all our imperial power, powers in order to emerge finally, to be rebirthed uh, and reborn. And to be reborn, we need all of us. We need Persians, we need Turks, we need Arabs, we need Chinese, we need Russians together. Yes. And Middle East it is precisely the place where, when, where this process yes, yes. Uh, arrives at, at its most concentrated form. Mm -hmm. So here everything is decided. Here in Lebanon, in Syria, in Palestine, in Iraq, in Saudi, in Yemen, and now um, uh, heroic, uh, heroic people of. Uh, uh, of uh, Houthi, they did, uh, they did, they did. They fight against the same, uh, the same power of, of the of the Saudi Arabia that yeah. caused so many troubles in uh, this region. So, the, we are, it, it is the same, the same. And maybe they are uh, fighting for Yemenid Empire, because that was traditional yes, yes. empire. And what? Saudi Arabia represents, it is not traditional, it is reform, reformation, yes. it is uh, modern, modernism disguised, the modernism disguised as fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. The real, real tradition, it's Yemen, it's not uh, Sa Arabia, mm -hmm. Sa Saudi Arabia. So I think we are uh, assisting in the moment of re-emergence of empire, and uh, this re-emergence is precisely here. In this, in this land, in mm. Lebanon, in Syria, in Palestine. Uh, um, and I think that that is the hidden agenda of downing planes, killing uh, ambassadors, um, the, the, um, organizing massacres and tortures, uh, mass ki killings, mm. uh, suicide bombers. Uh, so terror is the part of this war, but the, the uh, we need to understand that the main ground it is spiritual. Mm -hmm. So if we will be real believers, mm -hmm. if we will be dedicated totally, totally devoted to mm -hmm. our our cause, mm -hmm. we will win, in spite of all material difficulties that we need to uh, undergo. And I think that is why. Our, our struggle is first of all spiritual yes. and so and that is why Middle East is first of all spiritual space. Yeah. It is spiritual space that uh, is uh, manifested as physical. Yeah. So that, that is uh, there is some uh, another uh, another physics here. Mm -hmm. Middle Eastern physics is spiritual mm -hmm. it's historic and eschatologic. Yes indeed indeed. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the discussion. I'd like to go on about many, many other things, but it's very late at night and the, the time of the show is over. So uh, God bless you. I, I hope that uh, you'll see the other parts of Lebanon, which I'm sure will touch you, touch you even more because uh, this is a land that touches. It's an old land that 
the prophets, including Jesus, walked, the disciples walked. And so uh, I know that you uh, you have an effect on, on the both Christians today and the Muslims. This is a very important subject. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the program. We'll see you next time, so stay tuned.